Today we're taking a look at some of the strange things we have in our storage closet and trying to make a CO2 powered soda bottle rocket. Guys, today is a little different. Every once in a while we get some weird stuff to experiment with or learn about or try and make a video about and it doesn't always work out how we plan. But today we wanted to show you some of just the things that we have in our storage closet and show you how neat they are even though we haven't yet figured out how to make a whole video out of them. Here's the basic idea. We collect some strange things sometimes and today we're gonna show some of them to you. We're gonna try and take some of these things and put them together into a CO2 powered soda bottle rocket. So these are some pretty fun things and then I think we're gonna take a few of them, put them together and see if we can make maybe a CO2 powered rocket or a, an Orbeez launcher. Um, it's gonna be fun. And we haven't tested any of this yet really. First up, we're going to take a look at this big old box right here. This, we were told, is the stuff inside of a water softener. Water softeners are designed for taking minerals out of your water so that it doesn't stain and stuff. And this right here is sort of a micro bead. It probably looks like sand, but if you get up really close to it, you'll be able to see that it's actually little tiny spheres. This stuff is interesting because at first it feels like it's mostly just a wet sand texture, but you can see that it doesn't stack and build quite the same as wet sand, but it also doesn't flow like dry sand. It's somewhere weirdly in between. And then of course, because every single grain is spherical and not a weird odd shape or some broken geometric pattern, uh, it has a very strange slidey texture. Everything just kind of like squeezes, like you can see, I'll grab a handful of it and just squeezing, it like all squeezes out. There's very little left and that's because it's so good at moving against itself that it just kind of keeps coming out. Yeah, there's just like a lot of water down at the bottom of this and I can get some of the darker stuff that has more water. It's not really dissolved into it, it's just surrounding each bead a little bit more. All right, because this is super round and has this sort of rolly texture, I'm gonna try putting it down on the ground and seeing how hard it is to walk on. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's basically just sliding. So it's not like wet or gooey or slimy, but it feels slippery because of how well my feet move over it. It's also very hard to evenly distribute, especially on this ground, which isn't perfectly smooth. It gets caught in little crevices and builds up there and then just kind of rolls away from all the other flatter parts. Water softener microbeads. If you've got anything specific you would like to see us do with them, especially if you're already familiar with it so you know what you're talking about, let us know. We'd love an idea of what to do with this stuff. Next up, at one point we showed you some giant rolls of fiber optic cable and we still have a little bit of that. Haven't found anything good to do with it because it's exceptionally fragile. But I was curious, this is basically fiber optic. It's not glass actually, but it's very similar properties to a fiber optic cable, but obviously it's much, much thicker. And so it does transmit light beautifully. Uh, originally it came and you can see it's very flexible. It's basically a plastic tube, uh, but it's perfectly solid and bubble free all the way through. So it does carry light well. Uh, when it came, it had kind of rough edges where it had been cut. I took some clear epoxy, some two part epoxy resin, and I put it on both ends to smooth it out to try and get like the best light transmission I could. And it's really neat. Like if you look right down at it, it looks like you're looking into a tube of mirror. Of course, what's cool about this stuff is how well it transmits light. So as a demonstration, I'm going to hold part of it in my shadow and point at the ground. And the other side, I'm going to point at the sun and you're gonna see how the light gets carried through it. Now, I originally bought this because I was curious about something very specific. I wanted to know if we could focus sunlight directly onto one end of it and have it carry enough light and heat through that the other side would be able to maybe even burn something. I was thinking if we had it fixed, under a solar scorcher or another magnifying lens, we could then have an intense heat that came out the other side and have sort of like a heat drawing solar pen. Unfortunately, when I tried that, before any burning amount of heat came out of one side, it actually started to burn the end of the cable. So it's exactly what I was afraid of. And if I had a glass one, that probably wouldn't happen, but glass is not gonna be flexible like this. So, it, it, did, it did work in some sense. Actually, while it was focusing on it, before the burn mark started to come out, we did get something to smoke. I was holding a, a match head right up against the tip of this and the wood actually started to smoke just a little bit before this started to burn. And once it started burning, it's a cascade effect because now it's black instead of clear. It heats up much more easily and it spreads. 
and I didn't want to ruin the whole end of it. So I really wish that that worked and I would love if there was a way to make it work. Maybe multiple cables all out and then they're all just have their one point focused, but I think you would probably need like mm, several dozen of them to get that to work and it wouldn't be all that flexible in the end. I'd still love for a way to do that and it is really fun to see how this works. Like if I cover the end of this, you can see how it gets, you know, dark and light perfectly in harmony with the covering. Of course, now we've got just a little bit of cloud going in front of the sun, so the effect is going to be a little less. But it's such fun stuff. It's amazing how well it transmits light. And it's pretty fun with lasers as well. Let's throw in that laser footage here. Mighty powerful laser. I can actually feel heat coming out of this. It's not a lot. It's very obvious if I hold up something sensitive like my lips. I can still feel it a little bit on my finger, but it just looks so cool the way that light travels right through. The burning laser is cool, but it has a very wide beam. This little green pointer has a much more narrow beam, and it's sweet because you can actually see the beam bouncing around inside the tube. So you can see like straight, and then it hits the side of the tube and just bounces and if I move the laser pointer around, you can see it just wibbling and wobbling. If I go at an extreme angle, you get a lot more bouncing. All right, this right here is a CO2 powered bike pump. The idea is that you can just carry this with you. And if you have a flat tire, emergency flat kind of thing, you can just take this and fill up your whole tire, or at least largely fill up your tire with a single cartridge kind of thing. And uh, just, you don't have to carry a whole pump. It doesn't take as much time and effort to get it all working. I thought that there was probably some fun things we could do with this. So far, I haven't found much, but today I think we're gonna play around with it, and we might try combining it with a couple other things. Uh, one of which is this. A friend of ours brought over this whole jar of, they're Orbeez, but they're not like the full-size Orbeez. They're like these smaller ones. These ones are clear. They probably come in other colors as well. But what's fun is if you get these little metal straws, he suggested that you could have kind of like, you know how you have a marshmallow war with PVC pipes and mini marshmallows? Take mouthful of these. Shoot them a good 30 feet, something like that. It's pretty fun, pretty easy. I'm just gonna see what happens if I hold this, just hold this right up to our CO2 valve and pull the trigger. Ready? Wow, that cleared the yard. I think we sent some in the next yard. I think they're having a party over there. That worked great. Let's do that against a target where we can see them hit. Try and aim this so we can uh, get it on camera. But I'm just gonna pull the trigger and see what happens. Three, two, one. That was a lot. I hope you can see it on camera. They're clear, so they're not the most visible, but there was several dozen, I think, just splattered against the wall. Ooh, several of them bounced right back to me. And uh, yeah, that's pretty fun. Three, two, one. Does empty them out quick. Hopefully you guys know that we really enjoy the channel Nighthawk in Light. And if you haven't seen it, you should go watch every video that he has because he's great. And he has a really cool video on making a bullpup style airsoft shooter that uses compressed air and a soda bottle. Well, we're going to try something similar uh, with our Orbeez here. So I've taken a straw and I drilled a hole, the correct size of the straw, through the lid of our soda bottle here. And now I've just sealed it up, eh, mostly, with electrical tape. It's probably not a perfect seal. But now, when I throw this onto our soda bottle, we have a straw in the middle, and I'm curious if I fill this up with a lot of these Orbeez, if I squeeze it, if any of them are gonna come out. Now, when Nighthawk and Light did this, he was using a compressor, which throws a lot of air into the bottle, and that's gonna get everything inside. He used airsoft beads. That's gonna get all those airsoft beads kind of floating around in the air and moving with the airflow out the straw. The straw is just gonna end in the middle of the bottle somewhere. So we'll just have the straw kind of ending in the middle, and I don't know if there'll be enough airflow to move any of these Orbeez, so I am trying to add quite a few of them just from squeezing it, I mean. Now at this point, when I'm squeezing the bottle, all, ooh, that smells like orange soda. Nice. Uh, all of the air should be going out that straw. Ooh, I think I can angle it down into the Orbeez. This might work. Ha-ha! We got a couple. All right, I'll squeeze a little harder and see what we get. <laughs> a lot of variation. Um, 
Orbeez definitely came out, water beads. Some went about eight feet and some went about 50 feet. So that's fun. That's fun, I like that. Yeah, I almost hit the wall with a couple of them. I like that, it's fun. All you have to do is squeeze it. Sometimes reinflate it with your mouth. Uh, but I'm gonna add a few more and then we're going to drill another hole so we can just hold this up to it and fire and see if we can blast CO2 into it and have the Orbeez go flying out of it. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, it made it all the way to the wall. That's fantastic. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. That's delightful. Oh, running out of power. That worked decently. Not a ton of air. You can't just keep spraying out forever with this stuff, but I'm pretty happy with how that worked. Uh, we've got a couple more cartridges. We can try putting a new one in and seeing if we can just kind of empty out this whole bottle here. Three, two, one. Well, not what I was intending, but A while ago, we did a video where in slow motion, we showed vapor forming inside of bottles. And we did that by adding a little bit of alcohol, stoppering them up with a Schrader valve, adding pressure with a bike pump, and then pulling out the stopper. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Schrader valve stopper, we're going to stopper up our soda bottle, we're going to attach it to our CO2, and then we're just gonna pull the trigger and wait for it to pop itself off and see how far it goes. Here it goes. Oh, not bad. Once it's in the air, you have an empty bottle full of pretty much nothing and it just tumbles. But we could also try adding some water to it, see what that does. Not a lot, because I don't want it to get too heavy, but try a little. Here it goes. Three, two, one. Perfect shot. And uh, it nailed me. As it launched it, like the stream just psh, sprayed me beautifully. That worked great. We just barely didn't hit the wall, which is pretty good aim. I like that. All right, guys, remember, if you have any cool ideas of things we should do with anything we showed you today, please let us know. We'd love to hear it. That's it for today, but you know, we've always got new stuff coming out. Go ahead and click that button there to subscribe to the channel so you never miss one, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.